Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 16th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storms and Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Office documents with malicious macros, well, one of the probably most common ways how organizations are being compromised these days. So always interesting to look for new ways to figure out who in the organization has them sitting on their system. Rob came up with a real neat PowerShell script that you can use to hunt for these office documents in your network. Now, there are a couple of things it does. It first of all looks for office files that have macros in them, but then it can also check if uh, this particular document was downloaded from the internet. It's sometimes referred to as the mark of the web, but well, documents, files in Windows and actually other operating systems too, like Mac OS, have a marker that will tell you whether this came from the local machine, the local intranet, a trusted site, or the internet. So this is a great way then to figure out whether or not a file with a macro was downloaded from the internet. A third parameter that Rob can look for is Cerebyte office files. But anyway, he wrote a pretty nice and well documented PowerShell script that will look through all your files that you can use to actually essentially spider your network for files that match these criteria. He said he had quite a bit of success with this, not just to find actual malware, but also, well, uh, users that just keep downloading macro documents from the internet, whether they're being malicious or not, probably still a good way to sort of look at these user systems to see if anything odd is happening. And then we had today two unrelated events that caused outages apparently for a number of different websites or at least slow responses. Well, let me head today two unrelated events that caused some outages for a number of websites. First of all, the last few days, there was a lot of news here about the U.S. Treasury starting to deposit the stimulus money that uh, most people here are supposed to get. And this caused so many people to check their bank accounts that actually some banks had problems with their online banking service. From the reports I've sort of seen anecdotally, it looks like uh, smaller banks happen to be more affected than larger banks, maybe just because of the overall resources that uh, these smaller banks dedicate to online banking. Secondly, Cloudflare, which, I don't know, uh, routes now 20-30% of all websites, had a significant outage by losing connectivity to one of Cloudflare's core data processing facilities. Now, the impact on actual websites hosted with Cloudflare appears to be minimal, but uh, the API and the control panel was pretty much not accessible for most of the day, which, of course, could then again lead to some outages if people weren't able to manage their Cloudflare settings correctly. Interesting root cause here, actually, according to the Cloudflare CEO, and he posted this on Twitter, they removed a cabinet with servers from this particular facility. Well, the servers turned out to be correctly identified as redundant, but the problem was a patch panel within this cabinet that apparently did provide some critical connectivity and that panel happened to be removed when this particular cabinet was removed. And MyCrypto and FishForward took a look at some Google Chrome extensions that apparently were after users' crypto coin wallets. In this particular case, the extensions claimed actually, at least in the couple examples I've seen, to provide some services to users of cryptocurrencies. But in the end, they ended up stealing passphrases, login credentials, or secret keys. Interestingly also that uh, these particular extensions were advertised with paid Google ads and had some good reviews that apparently were added by the authors of these extensions. All extensions were attributed to a particular Russian crime group. 
I've not really seen a ton of news sort of in the last year or so about these crypto coin stealing efforts, but they're still going on there. So if you're still using crypto coins, make sure that you keep your system safe. Once your crypto coins are gone, there's very little recourse that you have. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.